So today's blog post is about assessment, which is a huge subject, and no, I don't take the whole thing on, but I do focus on one key problem, which is that uh, people confuse different kinds of assessment. They often make the mistake of thinking they're assessing for multiple purposes, and they need to really make sure that they hone their assessment to one particular purpose, and I isolate four different kinds of assessment. Three of them have to do with evaluating a person, a set of needs. So those three kinds of assessment are diagnostic assessment, which is analogous to what a doctor does, trying to assess a person's needs, figure out where a person is and what you have to offer them. Then there are two other kinds of assessment that feel a little bit more scientific. Uh, one is a graduated assessment, where you take an assessment of the same person at two different points in time, like for example, the number of times they say the word home, and you measure that twice or three times, and so then you get a measurement over time of how somebody perhaps has changed vis-a-vis -vis that one particular measure. And you can imagine some of the limitations of that kind of assessment. Another kind of assessment is standardized assessment, and that does not necessarily have to mean like the SATs or the GREs, though that is an example of standardized assessment. In the case of standardized assessment, you, for whatever reason, have a data set, a pre-existing data set, and the reason why you are giving the assessment for the subject, for the student, is that you want to see where that student is vis-a-vis um, -vis that average. So these are kind of scientific, sort of. They're ways of evaluating a situation. The fourth kind of assessment is actually the kind of assessment you're doing when you give grades to a student in class. And actually calling it assessment is a little bit odd um, because really what you're doing is you are setting out a set of rewards or punishments, but generally we think of them as rewards. Uh, that is to say a grade or a score out of 100 that you're planning to give the student uh, based on whether or not they produce a certain result that you're looking for. You need to define define that result clearly. Now, the point of confusion that, and that I think causes a lot of problems with course planning and uh, you know, the challenge of treating kids fairly is that they imagine that this coercive assessment, this reward and punishment kind of assessment that is mm, pretty fundamental to running any kind of educational program, that that is somehow an evaluation of a person's actual skills, actual abilities, actual progress. And that isn't what it is, and that shouldn't be what it is. Um, you should be doing those other kinds of assessment, but don't allow your coercive assessments, and I like to use that word because I think people need to take seriously that that's exactly what they're doing when they give a kid a grade. I don't want them to confuse that coercive assessment with the subtler challenge of diagnosing a person's needs. Now, I've made diagnostic assessment sound kind of wholesome. I guess I've made, hopefully I've made uh, coercive assessment sound at least necessary, but I do think it actually has a very useful role to play in education. But I don't want to completely diss the graduated assessment and standardized assessments um, because they do have a role. It's just we tend to use them the wrong way. A standardized assessment is valuable because if it's done well, it's one data point that you can use as a way of communicating to different people about a situation. You can use it as part of a diagnostic assessment. Uh, similarly, graduated assessment. It's useful information if on Monday somebody said um 10 times and on Friday they said it only twice. It's not the whole picture. You should not imagine that it's possible to have the optimal configuration. That's ridiculous, we're dealing with human beings. It's impossible to, to assign a correct number and to make perfect judgment about what someone's needs are at any given moment. But being humble enough to approach the challenge of always doing a better and better job of configuring your assessment regime um, means having the humility to understand the limitations of whatever given kind of assessment you're trying to give.